Hi, this is Lee Garrett and welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. It's been seven years since we covered today's application and it's undergone a wealth of updates in that time. So much so that we're going to cover it from the ground up to make sure that you don't miss out anything because it's recently been upgraded to version 6. A default folder X has a cult following in the Mac community because it takes one of the most commonly used utilities on Mac OS, namely the Finder, and it gives it more functionality. It enhances the open and save dialogues in all of your applications so you can do things faster. The menus are snappy, the search is incredibly quick, and everything is just faster. And today I'm going to show you how it's configured. Well, let's take a look first of all at where you can get it from. So the developer St. Clair Software has it for sale on their site. And if I click on buy here, we can see that as I record, the license for version six is £40.95. And if you have version five, which has been around since around 2016, then you can check for upgrade pricing through this link here. If however, you're a SetApp subscriber, then the good news is it's part of the bundle there. So if you're not a subscriber currently, this is definitely one of those applications I would say is a good draw for you to try a setup out. And let's run it through for the first time. So I'm just gonna quit Safari here and invoke my app launcher and search for an open default folder X. Now I'm asked if I want to start it automatically when I log in, so that's a definite yes, I think. A welcome screen appears, and as I've said that it's able to start automatically, I've got a notification here that advises me of that. So I'll just close it. Now I'm just adding in a tiny bit here after I've edited the video because I realized that when I first installed default folder X on my own account, as it's an application I use daily, there were some permissions that I had to grant that as I'd enabled them on my account, I didn't need to re-allow them for this screencast online one. So I just want to show you what they are now. You are walked through the process when you first run the apps. So you don't need to find these or anything, but I just want to tell you what they are in case they concern. So first we have accessibility. And then next, we need to grant default folder X permission to the full disk. And of course, if it's going to have the ability to go into folders throughout your machine and save for you, this is of course needed. So accessibility and full disk access are pretty normal. But the one that may give you cause for concern is screen recording. Now, this is addressed on the product's website in an FAQ there, because in some circumstances, default folder X actually needs to select something from a menu in a file dialog to perform an action. Now default folder X takes a screenshot of the file dialog and displays it in front of the actual dialog for just a brief moment, hiding the activity of operating a menu, something the app has always done. It's only just recently that permission has had to be granted for it. So personally, I'm very much okay with that, but for more information, you can go to this URL here. Okay, we have a welcome window here, which if you wish, you can go through each stage. Default folder X can be accessed through the menu bar if you wish, something that we're going to be doing throughout the course of the video. I'm not going to need this again, so I'll check this. And then just clicking these arrows will walk you through some of the features that you're going to be able to use in default folder X. It's a pretty deep application and I will do all I can to walk you through all of the features logically and in some semblance of order. 